Yeah, I'm talking about transitional interfaces and uh, CSS3 animations. It's pretty basic. It's uh, how many of you are designers over here? How many designers do we have here? Uh, how, uh, how many developers? So that's pretty cool. This talks for like everyone: designers, developers, random people. Like it's like it's, it's pretty general. <laughs> so yeah, let's get on to the basics. What is a user interface? What exactly it is? I mean, when I'm designing a particular website, I go static. I mean, I design a particular state A of a uh, of a page. I design a state B of a page. But something which is missing is how do I change that state A to state B? It just happens. It's like uh, I call it bazinga. It just happens. The state just changes up. So the, this is where I introduce the idea. It, it's already there it, uh, in the talk. It's called transitional interface. Yeah. So uh, let me talk a bit more about this. We as uh, designers, we pay more attention to uh, to aesthetics. We we make uh, pages visually very appealing. We use some really cool, cool, uh, cool CSS to make things uh, make things run. They look beautiful. They look pretty amazing. But what happens if I do something like this? Say I have a list of items and I'm I, I'm willing to add another item using a button. Let's just do this here. Now you see the button coming in. It's coming. Now I ask you this question: Where is it coming from? Is it the list element converting into Bazinga? Is it what is happening here? I mean. What exactly happening? It's, it's something is broken. Something is missing. I don't know what, but let, let let's just do it again. I mean, it just adds up. There's nothing nothing here. There's no there, there, there was one state A which was minus the the, the the two new list elements, and we have state B which is with the two st uh, list elements. There's there's nothing intermediate. This is what I call it uh, is missing. What is it missing? Let's talk about that. Yeah. Now, when I'm going to, uh, when I'm designing a user interface, I, I, I put up a certain list of guidelines about that. I mean, this is all static. The ones I showed you, it's static. There's nothing in there. Now, we add content to it. First of all, static user interfaces are bullshit. You don't, you don't make one page. You make another page. You don't link them between. Does not, does not really, really make sense. And another talk about that is, there's more to animation than aesthetics. There is functionality. Let us use animations to add little, little more functionality to it, functionality to it, rather than uh, showing it off. You know, you know, I can do this cool stuff with animations. I can you know, use this keyframe. You can take things there, there, and uh, everywhere. It anyways doesn't work well with, uh, say, um, older browsers, mobile browsers, etc., iPads, etc. Doesn't work. So let's stick to the core functions. It's called functionality. <sighs> this is the thing. This is a new dimension which is missing in all the functions. Uh, in all interfaces that we make, I call it time. I mean, if a state is changing from A to B, something is missing. That's, that's something it is called as, I call it time. It's like pretty simple. I mean, there has to, you have to give a user an idea that something is happening. We put a lot of thought in visual design, but we do, we, we neglect this very important feature of a user interface design. It's called, it's, it's time. I mean, you have to do something about that. Let's just get into more details on this. So yeah. So how we, uh, it's just basics, how we make great interfaces, we use CSS3, we use animations, we use transitions, it's uh, simple, uh, how do we uh, control them, we use the good old jQuery, the jQuery UI is there, it's pretty simple, it's, it's not a concept. And there are several other libraries, I have like animate.css, we have complicated uh, transitions, everything can be done through D3.js and there are several other libraries, there's Twitter Bootstrap, which is written, I mean, which uh, takes care of this sometimes. Now, uh, talking about animations, let us get into transition. Let's get let's uh, get into the theoretical sides. Uh, how many of you, uh, how many of you wonder what is uh, what is linear? What is ease in? If you have written animations, like uh, what is ease in? What is ease out? What is ease in and out? And what is ease, which is the default for animations? It's a default fallback. So let's let, uh, let's uh, let's uh, get this started. See, I call this thing. This is the state A. The left part of it is state A, the right part of it is state B. I'll talk about a simple concept called acceleration. Now, when, uh, when I have to change, uh, something from state A to state B, there's, uh, the, the, the ball here as such is accelerate, deaccelerate, some, something's gonna happen. Now, this is linear. This is how a general computer works. There's a breakpoint in there. That's the point when the acceleration and deacceleration changes. Let's just animate this shit. So, did, if you, if you noticed, the change point occurs in the center of the, uh, it, the change point occurs in the center. It's right in the middle. This is where this thing changes. 
and uh, for animations like ease in, uh, for, okay, let us get back to linear. Linear is how your usual Capri computer works. It's like infi uh, infin uh, infinitely small time, amount of time. It just changes the state. I mean, it's, it's, it's not bad, it's disgusting. Let's talk about ease in. What ease in does is it shifts a change of point to a later stage. So the acceleration goes on for a longer time. It deaccelerates and it rapidly deaccelerates. This is a very good example. We, we see a very good example if you make, if you're making carousals and stuff like that. Say you lead, we have two images and we're switching states between two images, right? It, it, it it's, it's, a, it's very eye candy and it's, Highly functional if the images which are loading up for the user to see come up uh, slightly slower so that a, a person has at least has an idea from where this thing is coming from. This is this is uh, the concept here. Similarly, we have things like ease out. Here, the acceleration begins very rapidly and then the deacceleration occurs. This is uh, another state of this thing. When we have these two together, we call it ease in and out. We have two change points. We have acceleration, deacceleration twicely happening over here with a constant speed in the middle. So that's a bit uh, of the physics behind animations and transitions to be more appropriate. So yeah, uh, if you really want to uh, play on this, there's an amazing tool on the web. It's called Cubic Bezier. It's written by Lee Voro. It's, it's an amazing tool if you, you, if you want to uh, uh, run your own animations, if you want to play around with it, if you want to hack with it, it's, it's pretty amazing. So yeah, now I make a uh, I make a computer for humans. Now, see uh, when I'm uh, uh, now see the change that occurs. Whatever I said, let's just try to implement it. Say I'm adding a list element. This is how it should be like. It's it's like the elements it goes down. A new element slides in. It's much more clear. At least I have an idea from where the new element comes in from. It, it, it doesn't it make more sense to have stuff like this going on? It's very simple. It's very simple. It's like one line of jQuery and two keyframe elements that I'm using here. It's uh, The concept is simple. There's no badassery involved with animations here that, oh cool, this is cool stuff happening with this. No, it's simply functional. So there are various other examples on the web. Uh, I, uh, I, I wanted to show it live, but there's one pretty good uh, app with uh, the dribble, uh, the dribble has it. It's pretty nice. Uh, LinkedIn for iOS is very amazing uh, uh, when it comes to transitions. They are not static. They are highly dynamic. They make sense. But one another mantra I want to add right now is don't overdo with animations. They they can screw up your mind. I mean, it, it, it becomes haphazard after a time. Uh, animations in control are brilliant. Out of control animations are very sucky. This, this is an example I was talking about. Yeah. One read, uh, which I'll, uh, this, uh, there's a paper that I was going through. It's based on, uh, it, the paper is written by two Stanford graduates. These guys take uh, animation as an example from cartoons. I'll give you an example, like, uh, Disney has a huge set of guidelines. There are 12, uh, 12 of them. They describe different forms of animations like exaggeration, easing, cushioning, etc. Cushioning is very simple to ease in, by the way. So that's one very basic fundamental of animation. Uh, going around, they're very amazing. Say, uh, I mean, and user interfaces have a lot to take from cartoons. You can go to this paper, it's very amazing. Uh, yeah. So, as uh, Pascal de Silva says, he's an animator at Alifad, by the way, it seems crazy to me that more people don't think about interfaces with respect to dimension of time. Motion can be provide, uh, motion can provide so much information and it can provide context to information, which is much more important than designing an interface. So that's that, that's me. Uh, that, that's not me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, if you, uh, <laughs> so yeah, if you have any questions, you can just ping me up. I'm around. And yeah. You have questions? <laughs> questions. 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 Um. Hi. Here. Yeah. yeah, the example you showed for linear, yeah. I'm not sure, are you sure that's the way linear works? I yeah, that's, linear that's the way linear a, works. Isn't it a, you know, there's no acceleration at all in linear. Linearization a has a central midpoint. Uh, there is acceleration there. Uh, there is, uh, it, it's not your, uh, it's basic, it's not linear velocity concept that you're using here. It's, it's acceleration basically. Linear corresponds to a change point that happens exactly in the center of the state. That's, uh, that's the very basic. And uh, that is how it runs. I mean, 
it, it is linear. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thanks. That's right. I mean, uh, otherwise you can just not have I mean, animation. Do not accelerate it. You can just move it from state A to state B, and it'll work. Uh, that uh, that also exists. Uh, questions for? Hi, uh, over here. Yeah. Just a simple question. Yeah. I was very curious as to what you define as functionality and what you define as aesthetics, uh, because when you say a list item is becoming more functional by adding a transition into it, mm -hmm. what do you think a list's function is, and what exactly would you keep including in aesthetics? Because then I would say the fact that a list item has a blue color or has a gray color is also adding to functionality. The fact that it is slightly wider is also adding functionality. So where exactly do you stop rationalizing? everything as functionality and call some things as aesthetics only okay uh, uh we have a st uh, so uh, okay uh, i'll start with this say you design something uh, it's state a we have something we put in a lot of graphic design we put up a lot of functions a lot of css we put, we, create, we make a very good minimal good looking interface okay but uh, uh, and you design a state after that, which is uh, the example that I gave, a very simple example that I gave of the list, uh, the state B. When I'm adding a list element to that, that is basically, see, uh, what uh, uh, the concept I'm trying to tell here is, we, uh, all of us have some sort of experience in uh, uh, using interfaces on the web, right? What you are, uh, what, uh, what, uh, what a point makes, makes to me, all this comes from experience. Say I'm making, I'm designing an in interface for my mother, who's like not really into com uh, uh, computers at such. At such, now the now the, uh, the con uh, information, along with context, adds to the functionality here. It is not just the information. It's not the, okay. The list was there. List got added. It's it's okay. But where is it coming from? That adds context to it. It brings more life to it. It makes me think less of a robot. It makes me give a less robotic feeling of using an interface than a more human touch. Uh, human touch involved in it. And that is exactly my point. So, what is left as aesthetics in it? I mean, in case you can just answer that quickly. So uh, aesthetics is uh, what I'm doing in state A and B. Aesthetics does not involve the transition. Oh, more questions? <laughs> <laughs> Rasak is a senior, uh, is a alumnus of my college. <laughs> yeah. uh, more questions? Yeah. Let's start the mic in the back. So that's it. <laughs> so yeah, thank you. I, if you want to talk more about transition and failures, I'm right outside.